जयपुर अहमदाबाद दिल्ली में आपका स्वागत लखनऊ जंक्शन पैट कमिन्स रिटर्न टू अस्टेडियम वेर ही ब्रोक अ बिलियन हार्ट्स वेल शुभमन रिटर्न टू अस्टेडियम वेर ही वन इज आई पी एल एंड आई हैव रिटर्न टू अ चेयर विच आई लव रिटर्निंग टू हेलो एंड वेलकम वेलकम टू क्रिक बर्ज लाइव आई एम सयमी खेर एंड आई हैव गॉट two captains with me in the house who know how to win the big tournaments and uh, please welcome lisa and michael the two ashes winning captains it's always lovely to have you all here lisa you know whenever michael comes in before he lands into india he makes headlines we all know that <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's used to to yes. be honest but, but i haven't actually seen you so much since the world cup final i know have, have you got over it or what world is cup final what, what are you talking oh, about i see it's just been erased is it i know no, no i don't know, know it pretty well yeah i remember it i remember 2019 as well so. yeah Oh wow I'm getting I'm getting sledging <laughs> by an Aussie and an Englishman what more can and, I ask I were actually together, together for one change <laughs> <laughs> but none of none of India remembers what happened on that day so that one that one day is just erased from everyone's uh, mind so we don't know what what is the silence that Pat Cummins talks about we have no idea Well it, it, I think Pat might try and do the same again I mean it's uh, such a formidable stadium um I mean I was lucky to be there at least be there at the final it was no, no, incredible I, I mean it really was a, an incredible atmosphere until Pat Cummins got the ball in hand and uh, when he bowled that ball to Virat Kohli it was deathly silence and that's exactly what he'll try and achieve today mm-hmm. to try and silence the crowd and uh, delivery skill uh, captain as calm as he did in that world cup final I'm going to keep saying the world cup final because <laughs> I'm going to remind you that you actually <laughs> lost it quite convincingly in the end I have to say and Travis Head is obviously there as well so um I'm sure Pat and Travis have been talking the, the SRH team through the whole day in the dressing rooms <laughs> over the last couple of days you know Michael you can try it but we have this memory which we, Indian sport lovers don't remember certain things we Gold like fish memory way. right yeah we don't we like it that way we mm. keep certain 2003s out of our mind what do you remember <laughs> oh we remember 2011 dhoni 6 we remember the dhoni 6 we remember happy moments right. you know <clears throat> like the india england test series right now it's very oh, it's in our memory that didn't count <laughs> no, i didn't count <laughs> it counts for us it counts for us <laughs> But Lisa talking about both the captains uh, we were just talking about how nice guys are always uh, nice on a cricket field and uh, there are two nice guys out there there's Pat Cummins who's got a bag full of experience uh, and there's Shubman who's taking those baby steps uh, but what out of both of them have you liked the most Well it's interesting you actually say Pat Cummins is more experience he is i guess compared to shubman gill but he's actually quite new to the captaincy mm-hmm. um he's always been a young guy in a senior side or he's been very injured and hasn't really um taken part he's actually never captained australia in a t20 international so i actually think and i'm starting to see as well in this tournament that he's starting to kind of understand t20 cricket and the rhythm of it and the captaincy yes he's been able to captain the australian side through wonderful test series um test championship where they beat india i think i think they did yeah, yeah have the, you forgot the, that as yeah, well yeah the, i think they've forgotten that one <laughs> yeah. too uh and then the world cup as well so he's had some big moments and he's made some right decisions along the way so he does have that experience in that sense but he's certainly learning on the job when it comes to t20 cricket but both of them stay relatively calm mm. um a bit of a poker face you don't really see the emotions um you know they've got different types of coaching um around them so you got Daniel Vittori who's very much sits in the corner in the back and doesn't say much and then you got Ashish Neera who's <laughs> you can't sit him down it's like pipe down charge he just relax you know you'll be okay <laughs> but he's up and about and he in his passing on messages so um two very similar captains i think in in their demeanor mm. Michael he's the Pep Guardiola model Ashish Neera is it Ashish yeah. are you liking the the captain and coach I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to know what his calorie count is for the day because <laughs> his step count will be right up that I I believe that in in cricket you know it's uh, that combination between um captain player and the coach is the vital one um 
I would think that Shubman and Ashish have had a conversation and, mm -hmm. and Shubman's absolutely fine with that kind of arrangement. I, I personally like to see the coach prepare the team and as soon as it's match day, it's then up to the mm -hmm. captain to lead the team out in the middle, tactically manoeuvre however he feels is the right tactics on that given day. Um, Shubman, as you said, is just making those little steps into captaincy. I haven't seen enough of him to... Um, say whether he's going to be a standout and he's going to be a future Indian captain. We'll have to wait and see. But I like the fact that he's he's leading. You know, I think his best way of leading is with the bat. You know, I think Gujarat are going to desperately need big runs from Shubman Gill over the course of the next few weeks if they're going to emulate the last couple of years. Um, Pat Cummins annoys me because he makes captaincy look far too easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're two ex-captains and we, we, we tell everyone how hard captaincy is. Oh, it drains you and... <laughs> You know, you wake up every morning, and say, oh, no, I've got to do this, got to do that, I've got to do a press conference, got to speak to that player, tactically think about those manoeuvres. Um, he makes it far too easy. You know, it's, uh, it's been an incredible journey over the course of just a couple of years, really, with his captain. And where Australia are going to benefit is, as Lisa said, he hasn't captained Australian T20 cricket, but he's got two months to get used to captain in T20 cricket with his franchise and I'm sure that's going to help Australia in and around June when the, the T20 World Cup because I look at all the teams in, in the world and there's many, you know, I think the West Indies are going to be very powerful, India obviously, England, but I just look at that Australia T20 team, I, I just think it just looks like it's got complete power and combinations all the way down there at 1 to 11. Oh, can we, we can we package we really that up? That. Can we clip that, please? I've said I, I think I, 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 I think Australia going to win viral. the T20 World Cup. Wow, Ooh, the I, headline I, is here. I, I yeah. Michael, the headline's here, isn't I it? Do. Yeah. I do. I mean, uh, uh, unless England get their form back, um, India. I mean, they haven't won a ICC event for a, a long. Have you forgot that as well? <laughs> well, Michael, it's going to be it's going to be this T20 World Cup because really? the certain thing that you're trying to remind uh, me and all the lovely Indian viewers mm. who have forgotten what you're talking about. Come June, things are going to change. So, right. So we have this clip kept aside. Right. We have this clip clip from Michael saying it's going to be either Australia or England. Well, if, if England can get their mojo back, I, yeah. I actually wouldn't put England in the top four at the minute. I mm. think they've got a long way to go. I think there's a few of the teams that have kind of come up the rails. <laughs> I've started to play uh, some T20 cricket that looks quite threatening. All right. So Michael Mon has given us our headline and uh, he says India is not going to win the World Cup and Australia is. But uh, again, talking about today's game. Uh, I've got to uh, stay in I... India for the next two <laughs> <Yeah>. weeks. <laughs> Good luck. Have yeah. a great trip. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, talking about today's game, uh, Hyderabad have won the toss and they have decided to bat first. When we talk about them batting first, there's just one man that comes to our mind is Klassen and, you know, what he's been doing. He's just, this has been finishing things in the death overs, which has been scary because two games, they've had 481 runs scored in those two games, uh, an average of 240 in those games. And the scary part is they've made 151 runs between 16 to 20. So it's just, uh, you know, the way they've been finishing games, Lisa, has been scary. Yeah, it is. And, and Klaassen's leading the way, 99 off 39. That strike rate. Um, and he actually gives himself a little bit of time. He doesn't mm. go from ball one. He assesses the situation, mm -hmm. the conditions. And then once he's in his groove, <laughs> good luck to, to yeah. any bowler. I think bowlers fear him, and they should, because he's hit, what, 56s, I think, this year so far. Um, he is the standout batter when it comes to T20 cricket. Uh, and teams should be very wary of him. Yeah, I, I, I think he's got that mechanism in his in his mind that when he goes out to bat, you know, as Lisa said, he, he's not too worried. If he, if, even if he's, he's five off eight, mm, yeah. I don't think he's worried because his mechanism is sixes. And he knows that once he gets into his role of hitting sixes, he's got used to the pitch, the dimensions. And he knows that we saw in Calcutta, mm -hmm. you know, six after six, eight sixes on that occasion in the first game. Um, you know, I, I kind of look and think, where'd you bowl to him? And I guess throwing it out wide, you, you might get away with one or two, but he's got such a good reach, he can smack you over extra cover. I, I look and think the only way you can probably stick is go wide and come and angle it into his shoe. Heels. Just yeah. go straight into his wheels. And if you if you can get one or two there, you know what, he, he probably will squeeze one out and it might go for, to the boundary for four. He's that powerful, but you, you might get him off strike. You know, I think that's the way to, to bowl to those real powerful players. They want the strike. They want to yeah. be obviously facing as many balls as they possibly can. So the way to play against someone like Klassen, who's in the form of his life, is to either not get him in, <laughs> don't get the others out to get him in, or when he's in, get him down the other end. Mm -hmm. 
We have seen a lot of drop catches so far. Maybe it might be a strategic thing mm, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. actually yeah. just, if he's the next batter in, just keep dropping the ball. No, but you know <laughs> what? So your, the strategies to the bowlers are either keep dropping the ball or not let him come in. So these are stat. But then again, bowl down to his legs is something which I'm sure people watch the pre-match show before they get onto the stadium, Michael. So I'm sure they're going to take that note down. Aliza, you know, funnily you're talking about the 50, 50 sixes. sixes he's hit. So I read up somewhere he's hit 96 sixes in the last 12 months. And in his 12-year long T20 career, before the 12 months, he's hit 123 sixes. So what is it about Klaassen in these last 12 months? Like, how can you have such a purple patch? Well, I think he's strong. <laughs> Clearly he's strong. He's, what I like about him, and, and all, look at Nicholas Puran as well, got great base, a real good structure to um, the foundation of just batting, you know, a nice wide stance, gets himself in almost like a baseball style position. And, and from that position, he can hit a six from pretty much straight, wide, short, full. Uh, you, you get your York in, you've got a chance. If you miss your York about probably two inches, he's got the ability with those, the hands and the speed through the ball to just flick it to pretty much all parts of the ground uh, and, and clearly full of confidence. You know, hitting sixes for... for I look at someone like Joss Butler in, in the last uh, six to nine, he's not quite been at his best. And he's probably just lost a little bit of that belief and that confidence has, has gone from him. Whereas Klassen, you know, you go back three or four years ago, Joss Butler was doing that. Yes. Mm. Whereas Klassen has just got all the confidence. He's clearly got a good platform of a culture in the dressing room, which is allowing him to go and yeah. play in that fashion. Uh, but it's technique, it's mindset, it's everything all rolled into one. Uh, and when you've got that kind of power as well, it's uh, very, very difficult to keep that player quiet. I actually think also... Age plays an important role. He's 33. Mm. So, you know, when you're, you're late 20s, you're early 30s, it's actually your, probably your prime where you actually have unlocked the secrets. You know how to prepare, how to train. You know your strengths. You know your weaknesses and you're okay with your weaknesses. That's the other thing. You're not trying to be someone else. You're happy with who you are yeah. and how you play the game. Um, and that takes years. People can burst onto the scene when they're young. To be consistently good, it takes that that peak period of late twenties, early thirties, and he's thirty three now. He's flying. Uh, and, and while that comes with the experience, it's not just the experience of playing; it's the experience of seeing everything that a bowler yeah. can offer. So just the little quirks of an action, or you know, you, you look at all the great players; they they get an indication very early in a run up, or an early release, or an early part of the action of what ball's going to be coming down. And I probably think that Klassen has seen as much as any in terms of T20 cricket over the course of the years that he's been playing. And now that a bowler runs, he'll go, oh, that's going to be the Yorker. It's going to go wide. Mm -hmm. He'll be able to study the fields that have been set as well to kind of give himself a, a, a little bit of a head start in terms of where the ball's going to be bowled. And then he just sets himself for that kind of area to be bowled. And if it's in another area, he's good enough to kind of react to that as well. You know, you were talking about consistency, Lisa. The average there shows, you know, he's, I think, yeah. averaging 43 right now. And again, funnily, you speak about the maturity that comes in at a certain age. Klassen spoke about it and he said that, you know, earlier he used to get pretty worked up. Uh, if his previous ball didn't go well, he used to be thinking about what next. So he said what has changed for him is he's playing in the moment. We've heard so much about this in the moment, but to kind of execute it as players, how difficult is it to kind of just get to this execution of playing in the moment? It's the hardest thing because cricket has so much dead time. I know 2020 cricket is fast, but there's actually, the, the, when the bowler is at the top of the mark and by the time they run in, that, that's about what, maximum 10 seconds, if anything, till the ball is dead. The rest of the time, everyone's walking back. That's enough time for your mind to go <laughs> to the past or go into the future. Yes. Um, and you speak to players, and, and Vaughn and I, I'm sure, will remember every now and again there were key moments where we were probably humming a tune. We weren't actually thinking anything. And that's when you're in the moment just reacting to what's mm. coming down. That's, that's the key to success, but that is extremely hard. I mean, you're training at the moment, swimming, cycling, running for long periods of time. I'm well, sure I thousands. No, the pressure of international cricket is no <laughs> comparison to just some amateur trying to I, I, run I can it guarantee out. you're going to be under pressure in Berlin in that, in that open lake. And it's just a little bit cold and you're swimming away. <laughs> Who knows who's going to come and speak to you? <laughs> Let's get into our head now. <laughs> well, today just seems to be one of those days where I'm going to get dragged. But let's have a look at uh, the teams now. Let's have a look at Hyderabad first. They're going to be uh, batting first. Uh, 
So, no surprises there, no changes because, well, everything went according to plan in their last match. So, clearly, no surprises there. Yeah, they're playing good cricket, so no surprises there. I'm surprised, actually, in, in a slight way that Pat Cummins has gone against what worked in the World Cup final. I hate to keep going back to that World Cup final where he decided <laughs> to bowl first today, he decided to mm. bat first. Whether it's a used pitch and it's a little bit dry, they'll have to wait and see. But uh, generally, you know, the due factor comes into play. Mm -hmm. but I know it's a day game. game. I guess that's yeah. probably the reason why. But uh, that's why I like Pat Cummins. You know, he's never quite the, the one-trick <laughs> pony. He mm -hmm. seems to kind of always work it out. But that's a formidable team. And that batting lineup has just got power. And it's got the freedom, I think. You know, Lisa mentioned Daniel Vittori. I think that combination with Pat is such a strong one. I know they get on tremendously <laughs> well with the Aussie, obviously, management team as well, with uh, Daniel being involved in that. But that is a formidable batting lineup with the freedom and the culture. I mean, Travis Head is a real danger. He played so well in the last game, but he's just got this, this mojo at the minute that just allows him, in all formats of the game, it's like he's given this freedom to go out and just attack and be aggressive. And those first six overs, he's a, he's a player that you just hope as an opposing team that the ball goes to yeah. hand because if he gets away, uh, he, he can always get that uh, the, the team off to that flying start because of his mindset. Lisa, we'll have a look at the impact list mm. because we also know how, uh, you know, crucially they're using these impact players. Just to have a Glenn Phillips sitting out, it just feels like, you know, this is a really solid, solid team because... Uh, Glenn Phillips will walk into any T20 team, but clearly doesn't have a place. Yeah, the joys of IPL, isn't it? You, you can only <laughs> have four. And we've seen the, over the years some of the best players warming the bench just because you can't get them in. And because if you do, it really does upset your balance. You'd expect potentially Umran Malik to come in. He, he's come in as a sub before. Um, he only bowled the one over last game, none for 15. Obviously, they're missing Natarajan, um, you know, three wickets in the, his first game. So they'll be hoping that he comes in and comes good. Or maybe they go to Washington. Yeah. Yes. Like, I'm hoping they go to Washington because I think he's too good a player mm -hmm. to be sitting out. And I'm still scratching my head and I don't understand why he isn't in the playing 11 to start with. We'll have a look at Gujarat's playing 11 because they have two changes and uh, I don't know if it's going to be a turning track because Noor Ahmad comes in for Spencer Johnson and Darshan comes in. Uh, so, surprise there, do you think it is maybe because they're expecting a turning track? Yeah, and maybe we go back to Hyderabad, maybe that's why you probably see Washington come in for the second innings just to bowl his off spinners. Um, but again, on, on paper that looks a... A good side. Obviously, the, the, the two big players that are not there from previous years is Mohamed Shami and mm -hmm. obviously Hardik Pandya. And, and you take out those two quality, particularly, you know, Hardik and his all-round ability. But in terms of the, the world game in the last few years, Mohamed Shami has probably been the pick of, yes. of the seamers around the globe. He's just bowled with tremendous pace, accuracy, um, movement, you know, moving the white ball better than most. Go back to the World Cup again that you didn't quite get over the line, India, but... <laughs> Throughout that tournament, he was he was that ball. He had it on on a yeah. rope, you know. He was just kind of nipping it either way. Um, so you look at those two players in particular for this side, and you think, "Four, it's uh, they're big shoes to to kind of fill." But you know, Michael, you talk about we all love Mohammad Shami's seam position and his wrist position because it's one of the most beautiful sides in mm. in cricket. Uh, they have tried to get Omar Zai in place of Hardik to fill in that spot. They are big shoes, but uh, Omar Zai is someone. His seam position, the the master himself he has spoken about, about it. He did tweet about it, yeah. He tweeted about it, saying he reminds him of Praveen Kumar and uh, Bhuvi. So, what has, has he looked impressive to you? Yeah, he has, because he's been able to actually, obviously the ball doesn't swing for too long, but he'll, he'll grab it straight away and he's got the ability to swing it in, swing it out. So, if there's a little bit more movement, he could pour, uh, cause a lot of problems to the top order of Gujarat. Um, they just need the, it's probably their back end where they're kind of leaking and, uh, and oh, you also take out Rashid Khan, um, who hasn't been with their side and, you know, the, sorry, who's just come back, sorry, I was going to say, just come back from injury. He hasn't quite yes. hit his straps yet. So that, that's something that they'll need to, to ensure that they work towards because, um, they'll need to keep, uh, Hyderabad down to a, a, a smallish total, which um, at the moment doesn't look like that's possible. <laughs> but Omar Zai, for you, Michael, uh, has he looked impressive for you? Because again, he's somebody, you know, for an Afghan cricketer to come in, he's spoken about how it's a very big opportunity to just get to play with so many international cricketers and it's going to be a big learning for him. Yeah, I think having Rashid 
can't they? We'll, yes. we'll help him as well, which is uh, always great to have your kind of fellow international teammates in a franchise uh, dressing room. I mean, as I say, he's just got these huge kind of uh, shoes to fill in Hardik Pandya. The, the all-rounder is such a, a prominent position in any cricket uh, team, but particularly T20 cricket. If you've got quality all-rounders, uh, they're worth... Well, that's why they go for the big books. That's where the dollars go to generally. But, you know, his numbers are pretty good. He's got that ability, um, you know, to swing it. He's got the ability to take wickets. It's exactly what you want. Uh, but I do say I think it's very difficult to replace someone like Hardik. You know, Hardik has just got that wow factor. He'll hope to get the wow factor and he'll hope that it could come today. But, uh, yeah, I, I like what he does. I like what he tries to achieve. But it's very, very difficult to fill those shoes. He, the, the, the big step up for him will be the batting yes. role. Um, he hasn't quite found, and to be honest and to be fair to him, even before this year he was batting like number six, number mm. seven, and it was only in the Bangladesh Premier League where he sc scored over mm. 300 runs where he batted at that number four position. He's getting a huge opportunity here um, and he's got to really take that opportunity early in the tournament. And also for Gujarat's sake, because you know we were earlier talking about how Hyderabad's really finishing things off so well. This season, not so much for Gujarat. Last season, we saw them finishing things off really well, but unfortunately for them, their economy has, I think, been like seven and a half or something. They've had pretty much the same people. They've, uh, you know, not finished off like they did last year. So that's something they'd want to work on. Yeah, I mean, so I, I don't generally <laughs> look at these numbers too much. I just look at how many wins have they got. They've, right. they've won one out of two. You know, they just got over 160 to beat Mumbai against Chennai. Didn't get enough. Chennai got over 200 and they were bowled out for near on 140-odd. So two games into the tournament, I don't think we can look at too many trends. Um, it, it, it's just that hole. I mean, Hardik is such a, a finisher. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you're getting a lot of those kind of last five over, you know, pushes towards those big scores. And that's exactly what, uh, obviously, the Sunrisers have got. They've got power yes. and, and real uh, quality. And, and, and they've got the best player possibly in the world at the minute, in Henrik Clausen. So you're up against the best. Um, but they've just got to try and find, and I think that's what Shubman will be trying to work out, and, and, and with Ashes Nera, what kind of team can they be this year compared to the previous two years? Because you've got to work with what you've got. You know, you can't just suddenly start playing the same kind of brand of cricket all the time if your players don't allow you to do so. Um, so you've just got to try and maximise every ounce of energy and quality in your dressing room to try and make sure you come a consistent side. And, and when you've only played two games and you've won one, uh, I don't think it's a terrible start at all. There's teams that haven't won a game yet. And I think Gudra, with, with their experience of the last two years, with the coach that they have, um, I'll go back to what I said earlier. I think for Gudrat to be really competitive this year, Rashi Khan will have to find that fitness yeah. mm. and Shubman's going to have to have a stormer at the top of the order. The, the other player as well, which might be a factor of the finishing, is David Miller. Mm. Um, last 15 innings, he's only passed 33 times. Yeah. And two years ago, he almost oh, rediscovered yeah. himself. Yeah. Gudrat kind of, he, he scored, what, four, 481 runs. Mm -hmm. And last year... Um, he just wasn't at that same height. So he needs to click. Tawatia has had a great domestic yes. tournament, just hasn't quite clicked here in the IPL. So they're probably the two guys that they'll be wanting a little bit more from. Mm -hmm. But as Michael has said, the fact that, you know, they've won a game, they're not that far away, even though they're, what, eighth position, it's just their net run rate. So it's you know, still... You know how we're super strict at Crick Buzz, we're like these really strict principles who'll pick on the smallest things, but we're talking so much about death overs, we have a Crick Buzz live uh, question that's come in uh, with regards to the death overs. Uh, Abhimanyu Saha asks, SRH seem to have a massive problem at the death with Bhuvi, Janssen, Cummins, all capable of leaking runs aplenty, with just Natrajan in their ranks. How do they address this? Uh, it's interesting he asks this because better. the batters... <laughs> I, lo I love the words, uh, a massive problem. <laughs> two, two games in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Indian fans, we really pick, don't we? Really pick mm. on them. But I mean... If you ever have a discussion around this, because their batters have just won them their games. We saw how Pat Cummins did it in the last uh, game. You know, he got in, in, he made those changes and he was captaining very well. His uh, over went for three runs, I think. Boovie's over went for five runs. So they squeezed it in. But do you think this is something which is concerning or it's too early in the tournament? Uh, too early in the tournament. Yes, those numbers don't look that great, especially uh, Bhuvaneshwar. You know, but he does, you've got to remember that these guys also bowl the hardest overs <laughs> and on the flattest, 
flattest pitches as well. So um, I think they'll get better. They'll figure it out. Um, and also with a new skipper, new coaching staff, everything takes a little bit of time. Yeah, at least just look at that. I mean, Pat Cummins has bowled one over in the back end of an innings. I mean, he's high class. Mm -hmm. He's right up there with with the best bowlers in the world. And it might be his leadership comes to fore that he, he, he bowls some of the, the real dirty overs at the back end. You know, I think I think where I really li like T20 cricket is that it really kind of, it tells you who the real quality bowlers are in the world. You look at Bumrah. I mean, Bumrah in the what, 277 game, he was He's, high class, yes. head and shoulders above everyone else. And I think that's what I like about T20 cricket. That's when you're a real quality bowler, you do stand out because there is some rubbish being bowled down at times and it gets hit to all parts, rightly so. But when there's real quality and a bowler that just knows exactly what they're trying to achieve and he fires the Yorks in wide Yorkers, slow balls, um, it stands out a mile because, you know, they are bowling to, to players that are all very, very strong. They've all got the, the range to hit the ball, not just over the rope, but out the ground. <laughs> uh, so it's not easy being a bowler in, in this era of the game, but it's always, look, I, I always, you know, we, it's, a, it's the old saying, that, you know, batters win you a game, but bowlers will win you the tournament and that's definitely going to come to through. The pitches seem to be better mm -hmm. in this year's IPL and I think that's, that kind of uh, assessment and that, that comment will probably come to roost more in this year's IPL than ever before because if you've got quality in your bowlers, you know, even if it's a, a, a beautiful batting surface, they'll find a way of just restricting the opposition to something that you can mm -hmm. chase. But, you know, like you said, Michael, you almost rubbish the question off because you said it's just two games and we shouldn't be so strict on them. So, clearly not a concern for you all then. Not yet. Not yet. I'd be more concerned about their spinners. Yes. Mm. But, you know, someone who, again, we're just trying to be those strict school teachers, everything's going right for Hyderabad. If there's just one thing we have to pick on is maybe, you know, Mayank uh, trying to get back into form because, again, he's someone, like I said, I really like nice guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mayank is someone I'd really like to see in great form because he's just a really, really hard working, everyone works hard, but he's someone who's really, really, uh, you know, dedicated towards what he does and wants to improve on what he's doing. So, I think these numbers don't do justice to maybe what his talent is. Right. They don't do justice to what he does in domestic. Like in yes. the build-up to the Ranji Trophy, 200s, 350s. Um, but sometimes there's players, when they go to that next level, it just doesn't quite yeah. click. Yeah. They can score an absolute truckload. Um, and then you, on the flip side, you can have guys that just play below par, but there's something about them, so you elevate them and they just rise to the occasion. It could be just, it could be as simple as that because his numbers in domestic cricket in the build-up to the IPL have been good. Sensational. Yes. Yeah. So you, you cannot so fault his preparation. Players can, sometimes players can overthink it and desperately want it too much. Mm. You know, I guess when you're just playing your domestic tournament, you, you can just relax a bit and just play and there's not the focus of people like us talking about everything that you do. Um, and I think that's the step up in, you know, from kind of domestic cricket to international cricket and, and I, I put the IPL as an international tournament because it's so high yes. profile and pressurised and it, it's purely the players that can cope with the noise it is. Know, the noise from all the pundits all the supporters social media now which is a prominent part of being a, a sports person you know you've got to be able to cope with people whoever you are basically yes. saying you're not good enough or you should be doing X or Y differently um, so it's just purely a mental. He's got. He's definitely got the game. Mm -hmm. You know, when you watch him play, he has got the ability. You know, I, I guess it might be in his mind that he's not quite freeing himself up because he desperately wants to do it so much. Do you also feel sometimes maybe when everyone around you is performing so well that personal pressure adds on as a player? I think. I think you're not an athlete if you don't mm. scrutinise yeah. your own performance constantly. And these players, even if they they score a half century, they'll still scrutinise where they missed out and why didn't they continue to that not out. Mm -hmm. um, so no doubt he's having those internal conversations with himself. Um, it may be analysis by paralysis. Who yeah. knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know the guy. I don't know how he ticks. Um, but the one thing is Hyderabad can keep him in yeah. the side and hope because they're winning. Mm -hmm. And when you're winning, you can carry a player when they haven't quite clicked because you like to keep that core group together. There, there's a little bit of trust mm -hmm. given back by the selectors and hopefully that means at some point they'll repay the faith. So fingers crossed today's the day for him. 
Well, talking about internal scrutiny, I think uh, Lisa is that time when we have to do our internal scrutiny now and answer Mr. Joy Bhattacharya's mm. question. Have you ever got one of these? Yeah. I, did, I, I, I didn't even understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the Joy Factor question of the day. Three of the four to achieve a certain feat in ODI cricket are uh, is Islam, Shehen, Madhuksha and Hasaranga. Name the fourth currently playing in this tournament. What did those two? I don't yeah, even know. Three of the four to achieve. So. Islam. I don't know that guy. Madhushankar and Hasaranga. Yeah. Okay. Bangladesh player, Tajul Ismat Lajlam. Um, I've no idea. Uh, <laughs> I bet you I, I bet you even Google doesn't get that right. No, it's very tricky no, to you ask can't Google. Google it. That's you the can't problem Google with it. joy yeah. factor questions. You can't Google them. I'm out. Maybe maybe no. someday chat GPD goes to a level where we can get joy factor questions, but not right now. <laughs> so we'll just not attempt it. But whoever have the answers, please write in and uh, to us on Crick Buzz Live. We'll also now do something which also gets our internal scrutiny, scrutiny going, Lisa. The prediction game. The prediction game. But I think are, are you on the leaderboard yet? Yeah, I saw the leaderboard yesterday. Oh, is there a leaderboard? Yeah, we should I have see. a leaderboard, I no, think. No, Gareth's at oh, the top. No, yeah, we GK don't want to see really that. Then. Up there. No, he got lucky yesterday. He's been getting lucky since... Oh, look, look, we have look a, at that. Wow. Zero. Oh, so <laughs> wow, thanks, guys. <laughs> Lisa, how many days have you been in? Now, that's rubbish. I got one. But I got know? one. This is a rubbish leaderboard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think GK is paying them separately yeah. to get his name up there on the exactly. leaderboard. Exactly. This, this leaderboard... Well, you've got one, side. so you, you've, you've got no, 20. No, you got, so got one. So you, yeah. Okay. I want to speak to the producer. Where's the manager of this? <laughs> Who's looking after this? Did you this? get one right, did you? She got one right. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. That the other day, Simon, you and I got one right. Yeah. All three of us got one right. I think it's just GK. Uh, so anyway, GK let's get another one on the board. Yes. Mm. Um, I'm going to say 218. 218, Ooh. big number. Hydra bad batting. Yeah, yeah. 204. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, big okay. number. Okay, 204, 218. I have no place to go. Yeah. I, well, well, yes, you have places. Everyone has choices. I just life. wanted to be about 200. What about a low ball? Oh, okay. yeah. They might, I'll, have, I'll they might have a bad afternoon. All right. I'll fall for this trick and let's see. <laughs> Let me fall for this trick. Maybe it turns around. I'll go with... Might spin? Yeah, I'll go with 193. Oh, but that's, that's not necessarily... That's not that low, ball. is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to say like 170 right, uh, or something. Yeah. 193, I think. Okay, Let's sure. See. Let's see. So, well, Hyderabad's uh, batting first. We know how they finish things off. Uh, now it's time for us to go and finish the wasabi prawns that Michael's ordered for us. So we'll be doing that. Uh, don't forget to join us at the 10 hour point at the Crick Buzz Combox. We will see you all soon. <laughs> Delhi में आपका स्वागत। लखनऊ जंक्शन।